What's up everybody, this is Garrett with Lapis Laser Display. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about using X-Lights to control lasers or incorporating lasers into your, your x light show. Um, for the past few holiday seasons we've had the pleasure of working with uh, the Louisville Mega Cavern and their, uh, their underground light show and we've made um, some pretty big laser shows. Uh, the last one this year was, uh, we had about 15 lasers, uh, as well as a whole bunch of pixels, uh, LED stuff, um, all programmed with X lights and, and being played with FVP. Um, so the way I do it is uh, essentially, it, it all starts with this guy right here. This is a external FB4 uh, by Pangolin. It's a Artnet uh, slash DMX device. And essentially what it does is it allows you to, um, it, it, it's, the, it's the interface between the software and the laser. You can't just send out a cable from your computer into your laser, you gotta have something between that. So again, this is a network device. So you have your ethernet input, and then you also have DMX in and out. And so what this does is it allows you to essentially save laser cues or shows that you make in the laser software. In this case, I'm gonna be using Quick Show by Pangolin. and allows you to upload that stuff to the FB4. There's a built-in SD card on here. And then with X-Lights, you're going to be triggering those cues to play uh, with either Artnet or the DMX input. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using Artnet. If you have a laser that has um, an ILDA input using one of these ILDA cables, this is what you're gonna wanna use. It's the FB4 external. And also in this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a Kavant Clubmax laser that has a built-in FB4. So I won't be using the external because uh, I have the built-in FB4 in this laser. It's got the SD card in here. Here's the uh, Artnet uh, Ethernet inputs, and then you've got uh, the DMX input and output. So I'm going to be using Quick Show, like I said. Um, you you can also use uh, Penguin Beyond. And just quick side note: this is not the only um, device that's made that can interface with lasers. There are some other companies that make devices, uh, network devices that are just pretty much like this. X-Laser has the Mercury system uh, and there are others. So I just wanted to say, uh, say that really quick. All right, so let's get into Quick Show. This is Quick Show. Um, it comes with a bunch of stock cues and animations for laser. Um, you got all your graphics stuff, and then and your atmospherics, you've got things like sheets, waves, cones, boxes, beams, etc, etc. For this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a simple page of animals. And uh, I'll show you here. Got my laser set up, so we've got Flamingo, eagle, etc. And the first thing I want to do is, well, I want to upload these cues to my FB4. So I'm going to go to the file, I'm going to go to FB4 settings, and because we have our FB4 connected into our network, uh, I can go in here and access. Um, all these parameters um, directly to the FB4. So this is actually really cool too if you have, say your lasers are connected um, somewhere, you know, they're hanging somewhere 30 feet above your head or something and you want to go make changes to uh, say your brightness or your master size and all that stuff. You can do that right in here uh, being that you are you know, connected to that network. This is also where I'm going to be able to change the different modes on the FB4. Right now it's set to beyond QS, which is essentially 
the way, you know, the mode it needs to be when I'm interfacing between the software. Um, at some point, I'm going to actually choose the ArtNet mode uh, when I want to uh, trigger the cues from X lights, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. So, exporting, we're going to go to File FB4 Export, and I'm going to be using this guy right here. It's DMX FB3 blank template, and what that allows me to do is it allows me to essentially drag and drop different cues onto uh, onto the pages here. This is the workspace and this is to be exported. So this is like my blank slate. And what I can do is I can just drag and drop cues. So I'm just gonna put the, the emu, the flamingo and the eagle on page one, Q1, Q2 and Q3. And I'm going to choose export. It's going to say, please save FB4 SD project, which is fine. I'll just say test X lights. So if I need to recall that this particular export, I can do that later. So this is the export wizard. We're going to go next. So these two options right here, this is kind of important. It says apply color size, geometric correction, or do not apply any correction. Um, if you resize all your stuff, in the software itself and you would do that in your like geometric correction settings you would want to keep this checked but because we're probably going to be doing all the resizing and everything from the fb4 itself i'm going to say do not apply any correction so essentially it's just going to export these cues as is they're not going to be affected by the sizing and the recoloring that was done in the software that's going to give me the best, you know, the most flexibility later on. Um, content intended to be used on specific projectors. If this is basically if I'm going to be exporting uh, a timeline show that actually has multiple projectors, multiple FB4s, I can actually do that and it will send all the correct information to the specific projectors. Again, not really going to go into that right now. I'm going to keep this simple. So we're going to use this generic content usable on any projector. Um, next, and I've got two uh, laser systems in here right now. This FB4 SE, that's the one I want to send the cues to. I'll click next. Uh, I can either I can either export it to a file like that's connected to an SD an SD card is connected to my laptop or I can uh, connect to export directly to the FB4 that we're connected to. So I'm gonna do that. Next, 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 next. So then our export is complete and it will go back to this little screen and we can close that now. So if we go to our FB4 browser I can actually go in here and see, this is the FB4 we're connected to. I can go to the content and go to the DMX and pick my page one Q1 animation and play that just to make sure that it actually did get uploaded. So where I'm actually playing this from the FB4 content right now. So it looks like we got all of our stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the FB4 settings and again, my IP, I want to remember that I'm using the fixed IP of 1681110. And because that is basically what I'm going to be plugging in the X lights. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use this ArtNet mode. And once you, once you trigger the ArtNet mode, it'll actually disconnect from the software. That's so why it says laser software disconnected. Um, all right, so now let's go into X lights. All right, so this is essentially going to be pretty much the same way you would set up any other ArtNet controller or um, E131 controller. So we're going to add Ethernet controller 
and we're going to assign it 192.168.1.110 and then I'm going to just name this laser laser1 and then for my protocol I want to make sure that I choose artnet and this stuff is all right. Start universe one, blah, blah, blah. Good enough. So if you have multiple lasers, um, you know, you would essentially just, you would need an FB4 per laser. And then you would just add each one of those FB4s as a separate controller, pretty much. So, in our layout, we're going to be using uh, a DMX uh, guy. Sorry, let me do this again. General DMX. And so before we get into this, I'm going to go ahead and explain. Now, this is going to come with uh, a 16-channel DMX profile. And if you're familiar with um, the way moving heads work or any other DMX fixture, it's essentially going to have its own DMX profile um, and where, you know, each channel is going to do something different. You know, in a moving headlight, you know, channel one, channel two are usually going to be like pan and tilt and blah, 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 so on. Um, for the FB4, it uses a 16-channel DMX assignment. Um, there's also an extended DMX profile um, that I won't really talk about. Most of the time, you're just going to be using the 16-channel. And within the 16-channel, it's actually broken into four different modes. There's basic, standard, extended, and full. So, in this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the basic mode, which is really just, it, it really just has page selection, queue selection, and then the speed. Now, as you go through, and the way you change the modes is with the first channel. You'll see that the basic range is between 33 and 95, standard range 97 to 159, extended range, full range. And as you as you use the more advanced ranges, you have more control like fade, zoom, X size, Y size, scan rate, visible points, colors, all that stuff. But again, for this tutorial, I'm basically just going to be, all I really want to do is choose, say, the Flamingo at a certain time in my X-Lights timeline. So I'm going to start with the basic uh, mode. And the way I do that is on the first channel, I want to again make sure that my channel is set between 33 and 95. And that essentially just sets the control to the basic range. And then on channel two, I'll be able to change, I'll be able to pick the page number on the workspace. Channel three, I'm going to be able to pick the queue. And we're actually only using the first page, so I don't really need to do anything with channel two. On channel three, I'm going to want to choose Q1 or Q2 or Q3. And you can see that Q1 is between 33 and 35 is where I need to set my channel 3. Channel 4, it's automatically 100% speed if it's just left at 0. So essentially right now, I'm just going to be using channel 1 and channel 3, if that makes sense. I know I'm going through this kind of fast, but uh, it would take me a while to explain every little thing. So... All right, we're going to go, sorry, we're going to go back to x -Lights. And again, the number of channels in my DMX, uh, DMX fixture, whatever you want to call it, is 16. Um, we're not using red, green, and blue, so I'm just going to set these to zero um, because it doesn't really apply. For our controller, we want to choose laser one. And for our protocol... Uh, I've been using DMX Open, and that seems to work just fine. You can use other protocols, too, I think will work, but this is what I've just been using. So my first channel is going to be 1, and 
Um, if you did want to set your, you know, your first ArtNet channel to something else, you would want to make sure that that was something other than one, just like in DMX. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to the sequencer. And I'm going to start a new, I'm sorry. I'm going to open a new, what am I doing? Just saving. I'm going to open a new one. No. New sequence. Ah, I'm sorry. I had a sequence open. Animation, done. So here's our DMX general. And we're going to be using a DMX effect. I'm going to throw that on there. And I actually had this open before, so it will automatically plug in your previous settings on your uh, on your DMX effect. So uh, channel one is at 46, and remember I'm doing that because I want it to be within 33 to 95, which is the basic range. And then channel three I have set to 34, which is the first Q. It's Q1 because Q1 needs to be between 33 and 35. Now, when I hit play, or when I hit the little light switch, um, you can see that my ostrich, or I'm sorry, emu, came up. And if I were to change channel 3 to 36, or I'm sorry, 39, it will change to my second cue. And if I go up one higher, it will change to the eagle. So this is, you know, pretty much the simplest way you can do this. And, you know, again, I can set this on my timeline and I can um, take a new DMX effect and set that to, you know, the eagle. So when I play my sequence, it'll play my emu and then my eagle. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, it can get a little bit more advanced too if you wanted to say, uh, go into, you know, if you were to use uh, the quick show timeline um, and you were to um, use multiple lasers, multiple FB4s in your timeline, uh, if you want to build it out that way, you can do that. That's usually what I do, is, is I will take a song and I will put that song in Quick Show and program all my lasers to the song first. And then I'll export all that stuff into one queue and uh, then pretty much drag that back into x lights and essentially have that one cue triggered, which is a little bit more complicated uh, than it needs to be. If you're just do, doing simple laser cues, um, I would just do it the way I just told you, to where you can just have them on, you know, DMX channels. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that was the x Lights laser crash course. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can contact me through my website, lapislaser.com, and uh, make sure to check out our uh, Instagram, at lapislasers. Uh, also, I am a Kavant Penguin Unity dealer, so if you're interested in purchasing any of these systems, uh, please contact me and uh, we can talk about it. Thank you.